Support provided by Walters, Papillon, Thomas, Collins, LLC. Um, good afternoon, Rotarians. Uh, I am Davis Rora, and besides my profession as Director of Downtown Development District, I also serve on the Breck Commission. Last year, the Breck Commission voted unanimously to appoint Corey Wilson as the sixth superintendent of Breck in the agency's 70-year uh, history. With a budget of some $95 million and an organization that has approximately 1,000 employees, there are a host of projects and programs underway. Certainly, these are different times, and he will touch on Breck's response as well during COVID. A graduate of Morehouse College and Harvard Law School, he is a founding member of the Baton Rouge College Preparatory Charter School, a member of 100 Black Men, a 2014 graduate of the Chambership Leadership Program, and many, many other initiatives. Rotarians, please join me in welcoming one of our own, Corey Wilson. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for um, joining us here today. I'm always honored um, to give you guys updates on, on, on what it is we're doing here at Breck. Um, you know, a lot has changed, to say the least, since we last spoke um, last year. And so I just pray that this message is, 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 will be received and everyone is healthy um, and, and, and safe out there. Um, we can go to the next slide. And so we'll be talking today um, about Breck's response um, to, to COVID-19, as well as just give you an update on, on what we've been doing um, since the, the, the pandemic has started. And so just to, to bring you back in time, um, um, on, on March 11th, it was a Wednesday, we sort of had our first case here in, in Baton Rouge and, and news was spreading. Uh, we had already had a team meeting scheduled for that Friday, March 13th. Um, and so um, um, as things was getting a little intense. And so by two o'clock, the governor had announced that schools were closed. And um, by, by, by three o'clock, our, our team meeting was held in a different room, just sort of spacing out. By the time we came back on Friday, um, it, it was evident that, that things were moving rapidly. Uh, you know, one, one of the things we were fortunate to have, and, and you know, we don't think about this often, but uh, Phil Frost, who, who led us in prayer today, he, he's, he's the chairman of an international organization um, uh, of zoos in, in terms of international species, information systems. Um, and, and so Phil has the benefit and Breck, and, and as a result, the community of Baton Rouge has the benefit of being able to, to connect with people all across the world, including in China, where, where, where some of this stuff was starting. And so Phil was able to share with me, hey, hey, you know, I, I think we're closing. And, and he shared that information before the end of the day, Monday, um, um, we received some additional information and we made the decision on, on Monday, March 16th to close everything down. I share that um, because, you know, shortly thereafter, uh, March 22nd, the governor made his announcement to, to shut things down. Um, and so we were um, a little bit in advance of that, um, focusing on the safety of our employees, as well as the rest of the community. Um, um, and so some of the things, and so immediate closures um, was one of the things that, that we first did. Uh, next slide. Obviously communications in crises is one of the most important things um, uh, we learned. As I, as I shared with you last year, part of the reason uh, when many people were asking, you know, why would you take that job? Why would you take that job? Um, one of the main reasons I took the job is because um, of the team that, that I knew I would be sort of working with and, and helping lead, a uh, team that I had worked with in 2016, right after the the floods and, and, and a team that I had worked with uh, uh, doing some intense discussions about the location of the zoo. And so we had been through the battle together and, and um, you know, you talk about crisis situations, uh, sort of highlight the character of people and, and, and that was no more true than it was for us here at Breck as our, 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 our team shined and you, you should be proud of the, the park system that you have in place in terms of the, the people that are leading the system. And so uh, all doing the 
during the program, parks had to continue to be cleaned and maintained. Um, the, the uses of parks increased uh, not only here in Baton Rouge, um, but also across the country and even internationally. So as that, that use increased, um, we had to continue to maintain parks at the same high level we've always been doing. Uh, we had animals to feed, you know, um, not only at the zoo, but at the horse park, uh, Blue Bonnet Swamp and other areas. And we never stopped con construction or maintenance. Uh, one, one of the things that, you know, we were happy to see based on the CDC's recommendation, the governor here in Louisiana and governors all across the United States um, included outdoor activity as a, an essential activity. And so there was getting food, there was getting water, there was getting medicine, uh, there was going to work, and then there was outside activity. And so uh, we were happy to see, we've always known the benefits of parks and, and, and from a, not only a health perspective, uh, physical health, but, but mental health as well. And so we were happy to see that that was so pronounced in, in the governor's orders. Um, and and um, happy to see that people um, followed those orders and got out and, and was using our parks more than ever. We talked about construction continuing. I was I was um, um, fortunate enough to listen to to Dr. Scott give his economic outview of Louisiana yesterday. Um, he talked about the importance of construction to our economy. Uh, you know, when, when we think about BREC, we all we think about the parks and the health and wellness. But um, the fact that we do, you know, twenty million dollars a year in, in, in construction, it's a big boost to our economy. And there's just a list of things um, that that we've been doing uh, here here in the parish. Next slide, please. And so let's now talk about our focus on public health during the uh, pandemic. Next slide, please. And so we had a play it safe campaign where we signage, you know, I was fortunate to um, uh, participate on a, once it was a daily and then it became a, a um, every other day and then it became a weekly call with National uh, Park and Recreation Association and Park um, directors all across the country to, to, to find out what everyone was doing. And we all agreed that signage was one of the things that we can do more of. And so we emphasized um, uh, more signage in parks about um, um, adhering to the CDC requirements. Uh, we also uh, included some encouraging signs you may have seen if you had an opportunity to get out to our parks, uh, recognizing the heroes and, and encouraging people from a mental aspect um, um, to, for their strength and courage as we're all going through this global pandemic for the first time. Next slide, please. Hopefully the last time. Um, and so um, on March 22nd, when the governor um, closed everything, um, we, we were fortunate enough to, to talk to some of the governor's um, 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 advisors and talked about whether or not we should close golf courses. And the governor and his team encouraged us to the extent it was an outside activity, social distance can be maintained, encouraged us to keep golf courses open. Um, but because it was a, a, a shutdown across um, um, our state, we decided to, to, out of all safety precautions and to support the governor's um, um, message, we closed golf courses on March 24th. Uh, we also did it because it allowed us to uh, better prepare ourselves to serve customers when we did reopen. So, you know, we did got a lot of plexiglass, a lot of um, um, hand sanitizer and, and, and um, sort of rearranged our operations to limit the amount of times people would come in and uh, golf courses reopened about a month later. So we're, we were closed the entire month of April, which is um, our busiest and, and most profitable month. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and, and just right before I get off of golf, because I don't know if we mention it later here on, um, now that golf has reopened, we, we are uh, operating at a historically high level in terms of the number of people that are playing um, um, as well as the revenue that we're generating. So hats off uh, to our golf department, who again, operating in the pandemic with a lot of different operations in terms of wearing masks, 
uh, working behind plexiglass, uh, engaging customers outside and not coming into the clubhouse, um, um, more frequent cleaning of, of golf courts and those sort of things. Hats off to those guys who are serving more people now than they've ever served before and doing so in some restricted um, operations. One of the other things we, we were fortunate to, to do, and you may have heard about Three O'Clock Project, um, they, they reached out to us sort of first before um, they've now connected with multiple school districts, all not only in our parish, but, but across the state. And so um, they've served meals since the beginning of the pandemic, quite frankly, um, at more than you know, 15 of our parks, uh, many other locations. We, we helped them with different routes. As you can see, over almost a, close to a million uh, meals have been distributed. So we, we, we were able to shift quickly and use our parks in a way that we had never used them before, but we, we were fortunate enough to have those uh, facilities to be able to do that. Uh, also partnered with Healthy BR and Top Box as, as it relates to uh, distribution of foods and, and, and food deserts. Next, next slide, please. Um, we have an urban farm at, at Howell Community Park, which also plays a vital role in terms of creating uh, food access and some food deserts we have. Uh, that, that location has seen increased activity during the pandemic as we try um, and address the, those sort of inequities surrounding access to healthy food. Uh, next slide, please. So just want to let you know what we've been doing in terms of programming. Um, uh, you know, obviously with, um, um, we had facilities closed and uh, how, how are we going to engage and continue to to program um, um, people from an entertainment as well as an educational and health perspective. And so staff, again, able to quickly adjust um, and, and, and turn into virt and provide virtual summer camps, which we, which we did all across the parish at a variety of our facilities, including um, um, the zoo and, and many of our, of our other special facilities and community centers across the parish. Uh, those were well attended. I received many messages from the community um, telling about how, how great our virtual camps were, and they were surprised that they were so, also a success. Um, when we were able to go to phase two in, in, in July, uh, we were able to, to do in-person summer camps. And again, a um, lot of different safety um, measures put in place to ensure that one, staff was comfortable enough uh, to provide this service, which in turn allowed both kids and parents to feel uh, very comfortable uh, uh, in terms of dropping their kids off. And so a lot more outdoor activities, um, um, obviously fewer kids, fewer locations, but uh, it was a needed service for many during the summer, and we were glad we were able to provide that. Next slide, please. Our refresh campaign which you'll see on our website. Um, last time I checked, we had well over 50 videos and maybe a lot more there, but all types of different experiences. Many experiences as we provide, we try to make as many of those uh, virtual and online as possible. So there you can see, you can learn about different parts uh, of a horse, which I did not know about, um, but also um, skills, um, uh, if learn how to skateboard and those sort of things as well too. Next slide, please. And so we had several programs for teens and you can see some numbers in terms of participation, all virtual programs. Uh, there's that online athletic takeover where we had many of our, um, our, our local superstars from, from LSU and some that even played in the major leagues, um, uh, provided some, some training videos uh, so we were very excited about that. Um, we also did quite a bit of adaptive and inclusive online things. As, as isolation um, is, is a significant uh, issue during the pandemic, a lot of anxiety, a lot of, lot of depression. And so we were able to address that not only by encouraging people to get outdoors and do activities, but also being able to engage people online virtually. So very proud of our team for stepping up to help in that, those areas. Next next slide, please. 
uh, our, our arts program was very active online as well. Uh, you see a picture there of, of um, uh, Broadway veteran Donald Jones who, who, who did some um, 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 question and answer events online for us as well. Uh, but we had a lot of art programs, theater programs, uh, worked with the Arts Council on, on some programs to help with their virtual ebb and flow festival. Um, um, and our observatory was also quite busy during, during the pandemic. Next slide, please. Supporting our community. So, um, you know, as we entered phase one on May 15th and, and then phase two shortly thereafter uh, on June 4th, um, um, things got a little bit out of hand and, and we had another surge, uh, which led to um, um, the closing of, of other bars as well as mass mandates. And so during that June and July period where, where it was very difficult uh, for all of the parish, certainly from an economical standpoint, we did a call for partnerships where we basically reached out to everyone and said, um, um, let us know how, how we can help you. They had many organizations uh, that we're currently working with now who either lost office space or, or lost, uh, they couldn't, you know, couldn't. And, and so we've, we've partnered and are working on several partnerships agreements from, from that as, as an effort to try and um, um, help those um, leveraging the assets that we have. We, we did a blood drive as, as blood was a need uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we also did food and mass distribution. Again, as mass became mandatory, several elected officials across the parish reached out to us um, and, and were able to provide mass to a lot of our citizens in the parish. So we were able, actually very happy to be able to participate in as many ways as possible to serve the community. Next slide, please. Uh, some additional things we did, um, we, we encourage, you know, we have the food trucks. And so, uh, again, trying to spur some of those small businesses, uh, restaurants that may have been required to close. We reduced our fees for those food vendors to operate in our parks. Um, um, and that was a very successful venture as well. Again, from an educational standpoint, we've heard a lot about the, um, the lack of, of Wi-Fi for a lot of our households. Um, and so Breck has a lot of public Wi-Fi at many of our parks. And so we partnered with organizations to, to expand some of our current offerings and, and encourage people to, um, um, similar to the library, whether it's parking in the parking lot or getting close to the facility as possible to have that free public Wi-Fi access. And again, as testing became so important we were able to work with um, uh, Our Lady of the Lake, Oshner, as well as the mayor's office to, to utilize um, several of our parks, even here at our administrative office, uh, Womack Park, to do some drive-through COVID testing. And that too was, was very successful. So again, several different ways we tried to support the community. Next slide, please. Uh, there you see some pictures of some some staff of ours at the zoo um, that that called me immediately after um, Hurricane Laura caused significant damage to the Alexandria Zoo and said, "Hey, you know, these guys as well as uh, several zoos across the country um, came to help us uh, following Katrina, um, following uh, 2016, and 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 so." Um, without hesitation, we, we, we um, allowed our staff to go out there and, and help um, the Alexandria Zoo recover as well. Next slide, please. And so I just want to talk to you about some, some very exciting transformative projects we have uh, in store that, that are, are quite close to, to hatching, uh, very excited about. Again, just a reminder of, of the many uh, uh, construction projects uh, that obviously require significant planning and, and designing. Um, and, and again, I, I, I don't, you know, when we talk about this, I, I want to, you know, just let you know everything we're doing is because uh, the community is, has requested it. And, and in some cases, uh, we're, we're improving things 
uh, because we believe our community deserves to have nice things. And so uh, we've, we've been around, it'll be 75 years next year. Um, a lot of our infrastructure is old. And so uh, we try and replace and repair and um, keep things as current and nice looking as possible uh, because the community deserves it. And we know the benefits of having those things in the community um, from, from a very, you know, many different benefits, not only from health and wellness, but uh, economics, uh, safety, um, um, environmental, and the list goes on and on. So just wanted to mention that there. Next slide, please. Trails and greenways. So, Again, in 2004, when we went out to the community for the IYP and, and uh, did our, our strategic master plan, trails was the number one item. Um, again, in 2014, trails was the number one requested uh, park amenity. And so we're doing a lot. We, we recently just passed the bike and pedestrian master plan, working with both uh, DOTD and City Parish and some consultants to develop that plan. Uh, we, 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 are not, we now have a plan for over 250 miles of, of off-road trails uh, that, that Breck is responsible for implementing. And we, we are already well on our way um, to, to, to implementing many of those trails. Next slide, please. And so, yeah, uh, blue, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I go back just a quick second on the blue ways. Uh, we are one of the, the trails we are excited about are, are, are different blue ways. We have one at Highland uh, in terms of a, uh, a boat and kayak launch, well, not a boat, kayak and a canoe launch. Uh, same thing at, at Minshack we're working on. Uh, and as you'll see later on, we're, we're doing uh, something similar at Airline Highway, uh, providing access to, to Bayou Fountain, Fountain Bay, Bayou Fountain, as well as Bayou Manshack and, and some other uh, tributaries. Uh, our conservation areas have been very popular um, in the trails in terms of we have uh, very, you know, I've, I've been able to participate in many of those uh, great mental benefits from, from walking outside in the woods as well. So I encourage you to get out and explore some of our conservation areas if you haven't already. Uh, next slide. So we show a very exciting trail here that we're working on uh, this year, and hopefully you'll see construction on in 2021, um, um, a trail that will connect um, North Baton Rouge, Scotlandville Parkway, uh, all the way to, to downtown, um, um, uh, downtown east, as, as we uh, like to call it, right, right near Memorial Stadium. So it goes in front of Exxon there and, and sort of that, that buffer area. And so we're very excited about this as we talk about uh, not only connectivity, but, but equity as well in terms of having nice trails uh, in the northern part of the parish and, and, and connecting um, um, to our, our downtown. Very excited about that. We, we were able to leverage uh, the tax dollars we received from you um, to, to get a grant of more than $3 million from, from the federal government to help support the construction of this trail. Next slide, please. The Lakes Master Plan is, is moving forward. Uh, uh, Commissioner Rohr will be faced with a vote here um, um, a week from tomorrow um, in terms of a cooperative endeavor agreement between Breck, uh, City Parish, uh, LSU, as well as the state in terms of um, improving the health as well as the recreational use of the lakes there by dredging them, making them deeper. Um, we, we had a, a well, slight, well, I guess it wasn't slight to the fish. I was gonna say a slight fish kill, but it probably wasn't slight to the fish. So um, about 50 fish died just because uh, shortly after some of the weather we had where it was cloudy, lack of oxygen in the water. And so that, that along with the algae problem will continue to be an issue until um, um, we dredge the lakes, which you see, we have a plan to, to start that process um, here in the fall and hopefully uh, start construction around this time next year. So very excited about um, this. We also will improve the safety of the walking and biking around the trails, uh, which I know is a, is a big issue too. And so 
very, very excited to, to collaborate with other public in, in, uh, agencies and leverage your tax dollars to provide, again, great park amenities that the community uh, not only needs, but deserves. Next question, next slide, please. Another uh, project we're, we're excited about, uh, we're gonna have a new uh, safe room. These are some FEMA hazard mitigation dollars City Parish was able to obtain. Again, working collaboratively with other uh, government agencies where uh, this will serve as a safe room, uh, a place where emergency personnel, uh, not, not the public in terms of, a, not a public shelter, but emergency personnel, sort of uh, a command center, if you will, uh, hurricane strength walls will be um, uh, constructed, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it'll be a state-of-the-art recreation center right here at, at Memorial Stadium. And so um, $15 million project, uh, again, those type of federal dollars are reimbursement dollars. So, you know, we have to have the 15 million to even pull it off. Um, but we're, we're looking forward to doing this one. And we have another one. Next slide, please. Next slide, I'm ready. Uh, another one uh, is that airline, but here we, I'm showing how rec center and pool, how the, the how neighborhood right off of Winborn and, and Ardenwood here uh, received the most damage as a result of the 2016 flood. Our, our recreation center there at Howe had more than uh, eight feet of water in it, um, um, totally, damaged and destroyed. But but as you may imagine, um, uh, FEMA came in and, and took a look at it and said, uh, you know, basically, if you just rinse the walls off, you, you can, <laughs> it wasn't that simple, but um, they, they did not think it was totally destroyed. And as a result, we, we did not get significant uh, federal dollars for, for how recreation center and uh, nonetheless, uh, because we have operated in such an efficient manner with with the tax dollars we receive from the public, we were in a position to say, hey, uh, this community deserves a nice recreation center. And so uh, we, we are tearing down the old one. We have torn down the old one and are building a, a, a brand new recreation center here um, with a pool that that will be constructed to, to potentially be enclosed in the future. And so very excited about this project, uh, which th should start construction here in the next 30, 60 days or so. Next slide, please. Another casualty of um, the floods of 2016 was out in the central area, which was hit very hard. Um, we had just bought a little residential home um, um, that we were going to turn into a nature center and have some programming out there. Um, but the 2016 floods, I had a different idea. That structure was totally engulfed in water. Um, and again, um, a home of about $200,000, $300,000. FEMA did agree that that was totally uh, destroyed. Um, but here we're, we're, we're going to build a state-of-the-art um, nature conservation uh, center where uh, well over a million dollars um, that that building looks so cool to me as you can see it's uh, well off the ground well above the flood elevation le levels and that construction too um, is, is starting soon it, it'll, it'll be a bit of a challenge as, as you have to go under railroads to get to this area but it's a beautiful area as you see on the picture to the left with both the a meet and the co-meet um, connect. And, and if you haven't been out there, I encourage you to uh, take a moment to, to spend some time out there, um, especially while the weather is about to get uh, nice here in the next, um, hopefully, 30 days or so. Next slide, please. Again, another exciting uh, project that we're working on, again, working with other um, local state as well as federal officials here 
Uh, as a result of the I-10 widening project, it will have an impact on some of our parks. Uh, so we've been working with DOTD to, to outline um, some funding that we'll receive to make improvements to this park as a result of some of the impacts uh, that we, we will receive. So we're, we're, we'll be making significant improvements to Expressway Park. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, developing a trail that connects Expressway Park uh, to, to East Polk Street Park. And uh, the most exciting thing, we'll, we'll be connecting uh, East Polk Street Park to, to, to City Park. And so i um, excited about this project as well and being able to, to connect uh, um, East Polk to, to City Park and providing that access as we talk about connectivity across the parish. Next slide, please. Here's some pictures of what um, um, some parks under uh, uh, interstates look like. And so very excited about bringing this type of stuff here to Baton Rouge. Uh, again, our, our community deserves these kind of great park amenities and we're happy to be able to provide it. Next slide. So we talked about the strategic plan and, and the, the information we received from the public uh, in terms of the needs. Uh, one thing that was identified both in our 2004 and 2014 plans was a need for another community park in the southeast uh, portion of the parish as that portion continues to grow. Um, um, uh, and while we have Highland uh, on one side and we have Forest on one side, um, there was still a service gap. And so after looking for a property, uh, we all, and it's tough to find property out there in that part of town, we ultimately uh, landed on improving airline highway, uh, um, affectionately known as the state fairgrounds, uh, to become our next community park. And so when you say community park, again, think Highland, Perkins, uh, those parks that, that are large in nature have multiple amenities that you can spend um, multiple days uh, exploring and enjoying different type of things. So we're excited um, about the possibilities at Airline, um, especially as it pertains to the management of, of storm water. Uh, we, we look to be, this will be sort of our signature project as, as it uh, pertains to our capabilities there. Uh, and I believe the next slide talks a little bit about that, maybe. Yes, and so this whole idea in terms of designing for resiliency and in terms of being able to bounce back quickly from uh, natural disasters, primarily flooding here in our area, uh, which which is a priority um, that, that I think we all can agree on. We, we want some solutions to. And so we, we plan to play a big role in that we have in the past and, and going forward, um, every, every park we design, uh, we keep in mind uh, the capacity of water it can hold and how do we uh, handle that water um, so that it does not flood our, our homes uh, as well as our, our businesses and commercial properties. Uh, and just as a reminder, I believe the next slide, um, share this with you guys. Uh, last year, but just a reminder in 2016, you see we, we almost held 10 billion gallons of, um, of flood water in the, in the 2016 flood um, in, in all of our parks, um, enough to fill uh, LSU's Tiger Stadium 71 times. And that's, uh, that's, that's at full capacity. That's not at 25% at capacity. So uh, we, we were excited to, to be able to uh, continue to provide another benefit to the parish through the use and design of our parks and facilities. Next slide, please. And so um, um, the, 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 the project, we're, we're sort of our premier project right now, the largest project in the history of BREC is, is the improvements that we're planning at, at Greenwood, as well as the Baton Rouge Zoo. Um, uh, we've, we've talked about this uh, for years now, and we are now at the point where uh, we're looking to do a groundbreaking here in the next 
um, uh, 30 to 60 days. Very, very excited about um, kicking this project off. Um, again, uh, uh, the, we completed a master plan that was approved and accepted by our board, uh, showing a phased approach, obviously, but more than $200 million improvement of a zoo to bring it up to today's standards, um, as well as um, $100 million of improvements to the park, including uh, some of those resiliency improvements in terms of holding more water at this park, expanding the lake, but also creating um, some, some, some very innovative, imaginative uh, experiences, not only for the residents in that community, Baker, North Baton Rouge area, but um, all over our parish. This will be a, a regional attraction that we, we expect many people uh, from all over our area, all over the country to come and visit. Uh, next slide. So one of the things we're excited about and, and one of the biggest things of, of the first phase, uh, which we anticipate will be somewhere between 35 and $40 million, is we're changing the entrance of the zoo, um, um, bringing that to the middle of the park now. And so you'll be entering the zoo off of Highway 19. Um, um, there are some images of um, some improvements that we're making um, at the zoo. Uh, we talked a little earlier about the zoo and the zoo did open in phase one uh, on May 15th. And as that previous slide uh, showed, uh, we celebrated, we uh, had a celebration scheduled for late March, April, um, celebrating 50 years of the zoo opening um, on Easter. Uh, but as you know, uh, COVID and the pandemic had different plans for our Easter, so we weren't unable to do that. But we did move forward with our, once we were able to open in phase one with our plan of 50 cent Wednesdays on, in, in, in June. Uh, and just for your information, every Wednesday throughout the year is a dollar and 50 cents. We do that from an equity standpoint. Uh, it is for a certain amount of hours, but um, if, if, if you have a family of, of five or six and you don't, you can't afford it, um, um, we, we offer that opportunity. And so this past June, um, we had the highest attendance in, in the 50 year history of the zoo. Um, um, part of that is people wanting to get out and, and uh, experience some outdoor activity, but a large part of it is just the, the, the level of service uh, that is provided at the zoo by, by, by both Phil and his team. And so talking about some of the improvements that are going to take place in phase one, uh, see some great images there. Next slide, please. Oh, so, um, 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 yeah. And so just the new, the new entry plaza, uh, the slide, uh, the picture to the right is what it looks like after you go through that beautiful, uh, entrance, but we're, we're, we're very excited. A uh, significant amount of uh, funds will be allocated towards addressing some of the issues in the accreditation uh, report. And so uh, look forward to, to reapplying for accreditation here in the near future when the construction is complete or near complete. Um, but, but, but there are uh, several great exciting things about the zoo. And so I think I, I, I left a uh, a little time. I believe the next slide is my last slide. It just shows an inventory of, of everything that we have, but I did want to open it up for questions and address any questions you may have. Or um, not quite sure how the question and answer yeah. area works. So. <laughs> so, Lou, I'll, I'll read the questions for you here. here. Okay, great. So Paul Arrigo says, thank you for supporting us and assisting and hosting major events. What are the plans for improving or updating or enlarging Oak Villa? And so um, I appreciate that uh, softball question, Paul, because uh, we are in, in, in talks right now with a private uh, local organization that, that is interested in helping us uh, renovate Oak Villa in terms of turfing the fields, 
uh, improving the lighting uh, as well as improving the parking lot so that we can host more uh, local as well as out of state and, and out of parish tournaments. Uh, we do recognize uh, that is an, a significant economic impact in terms of parents coming to, to spend the night uh, as well as eating at our local restaurants and, and uh, using our, our local grocers and stuff like that. So um, again, you know, just leveraging our, our tax dollars, um, uh, working with um, uh, private organizations as well as the philanthropic community um, um, but also investing some of our funds to participate that would encourage others to work with us as well. So um, should hopefully have some news here in the near future about a potential partnership of not only improving Oak Villa, but, but some other uh, baseball operations across, across the parish. That, that is one of our um, uh, major uh, sort of next steps in terms of uh, our athletic facilities and, and being able to uh, host something here in Baton Rouge. We do a great job of that with soccer, but we do know Baton Rouge is, is sort of the, um, uh, the, the best place in the, in the world for baseball talent. Uh, and unfortunately, we, we don't have a, uh, uh, we do host many tournaments at Oak Villa, but we can, uh, we can do a lot better job in that area. So we're looking to, to improve that facility soon, Paul. Great. Uh, Jerry Hobdy asked, so will MOSEP be housed in the safe room at the uh, uh, Park Memorial, or is it just expanding uh, near um, the Independence Park? Yes, and so thanks for that question, um, Jerry. MOSEP will not be housed there. Uh, again, it, it'll be totally run and operated by BREC 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, now, when a disaster hit, and MOSEP says, hey, Brett, get out of there. We need it. And yes, we will turn it over to, to, to MOSEP uh, during those times. And so they will have first priority doing, doing those emergency events, but they will not be um, uh, housed there permanently. Holly Dutchman wants to know, when do you think the construction at the Airline Highway Community Park will begin? Uh, great question, Holly. So right now we're still um, in the planning process of that. Uh, uh, one of the things uh, that that uh, I believe is sort of our, our secret sauce to, to being successful uh, throughout our 75 year history and, and sort of the foundation was led by, by Mr. Gene Young, who, who passed away earlier this year. So um, pay my respects to him for for sort of setting the trail. Uh, but, but, but the planning and, and the, the, the community engagement input is so important to, to, to building something that the public wants to use, right? Uh, you have to ask the public what they want to see. So right now we're in the middle of that process. They will be um, probably here within the next 30 days or so. Uh, you, you'll, you'll see something um, inviting you to provide input and information and come to a public meeting uh, about what you want to see at Airline Highway. So uh, we're doing some of that internally with our staff and, and some of the smaller groups like the State Fairground and the air gun uh, range that is out there. But we, we, we will be coming to the public uh, soon to say, what do you want to see? We expect that planning process to, to, to go throughout the end of this year. Um, uh, um, next year probably is going to be um, contribute uh, attributed to designing the entire uh, once we get the input we'll have to design it um, so construction uh, to add to your question may not start until um, uh, the last quarter of next year 21 and maybe even the first quarter of 22. Jerry had another question uh, Jerry Hobby Breck is expanding public private partnerships in some very innovative and creeping ways, increasing equity investments. Um, she just wanted to thank you for that. Yes, you're welcome. Um, um, and so, yes, uh, I, I certainly encourage all of you as, as business leaders in our community, um, um, if, if there are ideas about partnerships and leveraging the public resources that we have to better serve the public, like we, we invite you to share those ideas with us. As Jerry mentioned, you know, we, we've um, done quite a bit of innovative things in terms of partnering with 
uh, hospitals and partnering with schools, um, um, whether, whether it's just simply providing office space for somebody or operating a, a brand new entire program, um, um, whether it's REC um, doing operations on their facility or they're coming to BREC and doing operations. And so there, there's no limit to the amount of partnerships we have. That's, that's our number one uh, goal. We now have a, a special division devoted dar da directly towards partnerships so we can be more intentional about uh, entering into partnerships and measuring those partnerships and uh, ongoing communication to make those partnerships as successful as possible. So. Um, we, we, we are, as they say, we are open for business. Right. Marvin Borgmore wants to know, how do we plan to fund the Greenwood Park Zoo improvements? And so, um, um, thanks Marvin and, and, and good to, good to hear from you. Uh, hopefully I can see you in the real world here soon, pretty, pretty shortly, uh, maybe as soon as October 7th. Huh? But um, in, in terms of funding the zoo, and so the board did uh, approve the plans uh, that were developed with community input last year, um, which had a price ticket of, of 200 million for the zoo and, and 100 million for the, for the park. Um, um, because we have uh, operated in such an efficient way, um, um, serving the community and not reducing uh, the level of service there and being able to address the needs of the community. Uh, we, we have some funds reserved that we can contribute uh, to the zoo. Now we don't have 200 million uh, reserved, but we, we have committed, um, at least I've publicly committed, the board still has to approve this and, and we expect to bring that to them before the end of the year. But um, um, being able to show them how we can use 35 to $40 million of our reserve to fund the first phase. And so the first phase will be funded totally by BREC through use of some of its reserves. Our intent there uh, is to show the community uh, how serious we are about these improvements, but also to show the community um, the success of that first phase uh, the potential vision of, of what phase two and phase three look like. Uh, we are in the process of uh, reevaluating and, and restructuring our, our entire fundraising uh, operations. Uh, uh, as you know, Marvin, working closely with both the Friends of the Zoo and the Breck Foundation to put us in a position to be able to uh, not always have to ask for tax dollars, but put us in a position to be able to um, um, go to philanthropic uh, uh, partners and, and private businesses to show them the return on investment for, for uh, donating um, some funds. And so that, 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 that will be our, our next step. Um, and, and hopefully um, uh, we can do that and, and get some momentum going. Um, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll be successful uh, and take it, take it one phase at a time. So we, we, we got the first phase covered. Uh, second phase is scheduled for 23-24. Um, uh, we hope to be in a position to show the community that, hey, uh, we've gone out and raised some private dollars and, and, and uh, uh, maybe look forward to the community supporting uh, phase two as well. Ken Best asked, has the issue of what to do with the dredge spoil from the city parks lakes has been resolved? And if so, what is it? And no, Ken, great question. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you live around the lakes and, and are concerned about the smell of, of the dredge there. Uh, and so where we are not right now, there, there's an RFP. Um, um, again, uh, all of this is contingent on uh, Metro Council approval and, and BREC um, uh, board approval in terms of the funds. And once those approvals, uh, which we hope to get before the uh, end of September here, Assuming that all goes well there, uh, we will issue an RFP for a designer to come on board to say, uh, this, is, this is what you need to do to, to, to dredge. And that, during those discussions, once we hire a designer, once we hire a contract to actually do the work, those discussions will take place then in terms of how to probably um, 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 not necessarily dispose of the dredge because the idea is to use the dredge to build out 
uh, some of the shorelines to have safer uh, walking and biking paths. But to your point, the dredge is going to have to go somewhere between the time of dredging and the time of using it for the additional um, shoreline. And so we'll work with the, um, the engineers and the architects to, to make sure that is um, we put it in the, uh, the least intrusive, least intrusive uh, place as possible there, Ken. One last question. Rachel DeResto would like to know, can you tell us about the economic impact study for BREC underway by, the, uh, by Trust for Public Land? Yes, and so um, one of the things um, um, I'm, I'm big on in terms of my uh, uh, tenure here as, as, as superintendent in terms of our administration is the, the, the ability to uh, um, show performance measures, track data, and those sort of things like that. And so instead of me just coming on here and telling you how great parks are and, and why you should invest in it, um, and, and while we have some, some empirical data to, to, to share, uh, we need more. And so we're working with the Trust for Public Land, um, uh, which is the leader in, in basically parks and green space in terms of data and those sort of things. They're going to work with us on, on an economic impact study um, on a variety of areas in terms of recreational value, uh, the value we provide in terms of uh, uh, health and medical industry, um, the environment, um, 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 and, and, and a variety of other areas. And so uh, they're, they're on board now, and uh, it's going to be a multi-year process because, again, there's about seven different areas. Um, but, but we're excited about being able to capture that data uh, to provide back to you, the taxpayers, the investors, to show you exactly what your return on investment is uh, whenever you decide to, to invest in parks and recreation. And I just have to, before we jump off, um, reiterate that, that now is the time that we need to double down really on our investments on park and recreations. When we look at a global pandemic um, um, that that is um, um, not caused by, but certainly high risk factors of, of obesity and diabetes and, and hypertension, high blood pressure. Um, our parks and recreational facilities have the solutions for that. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a testament to that and I don't wanna to share too much in my medical uh, history, but, but I, let's just say during the pandemic, I did a lot of walking and I'm no longer taking a medication that I was taking before the pandemic. And so, um, um, and so I just, just wanna remind, and, that people are using parks more than ever, um, um, but we wanna be there to support and continue to maintain parks at a high level. Um, we can only do that with your support. So thanks everybody for, for their investments, uh, for their support. Uh, we just hope that you are satisfied with the return that we are providing uh, and look forward to continuing to, to do great things here um, in the parish. Support provided by Walters, Papillon, Thomas, Collins, LLC.